This video discusses the tracking sensor system of a Biogram 4000 turntable. I will discuss how to replace the light bulb with an LED, how to adjust the aperture after this procedure, and I will also discuss the circuit. For more information, please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or go to my website at www.biolover.com. This here shows the pertinent part of the circuit diagram. The motor that drives the tone arm carriage is controlled by an H bridge. These are these eight transistors. And so depending on whether the current is passed through the motor in this direction or in this direction, the motor will either drive the carriage towards the center of the record or away. Now the bases of the transistors 27 and 26 and 33 and 32, they are controlled by these two light sensitive resistors. Depending on how much light falls on these resistors, their resistance increases or decreases. Therefore, when we increase the light on this resistor, it will pull up the base of 27 and 26, and the current will flow in this direction through the motor. This will drive the carriage towards the center of the record. And if light falls on this resistor, then the bases of 33 and 32 get pulled up and the current will pass in this direction. This will return the carriage towards the home position. So essentially we have two independent feedback circuits that can drive the tone arm towards the center of the record or away, depending on whether we use this sensor or that sensor. Now the normal case is of course that the tone arm is drawn towards the center of the record because of the spiral of the groove that's in the vinyl. So let's examine this case. So the uh, tone arm gets pulled towards the center because it advances on the record as it plays. So that will increase the light on this resistor. It will pull up the bases of these transistors and the motor will turn on and it will drive the carriage towards the center of the record, in essence following the tone arm. That will restore the position of the aperture in between the two sensors and that causes the motor to stop. This establishes an electromechanical feedback circuit that drives the carriage after the needle on the groove of the record. The amazing feature of this circuit is that it could in theory also accommodate a record that plays in reverse direction because we have the second sensor which would enable to drive the carriage after the needle as it proceeds towards the outside of the record. This is a significant difference to the later 4002 and 4004 models. They only have one sensor and they can only drive the carriage towards the center of the record. Let's have a look at the original setup first. This here is the light bulb housing. And so if you don't have this modified version that we're seeing here, then this here is the ground contact and this here is the 6 volt contact that uh, runs the light bulb. And so ground is made through this trace. You see it here. And what they did is now they cut off this trace and they replaced the ground contact with this trimmer that goes to ground. And so this is what you see here. So they mounted the trimmer on the side and make ground now with the mounting screw that goes into the chassis of the turntable. And then they connect here with this jumper to the original uh, ground connector of the light bulb. So you may find this in your 4000 or you may not. It depends uh, whether it has seen service after uh, this bulletin came out. You will see later when I adjust the tracking sensor, it is very beneficial if one has this trimmer because one can do some fine tuning after do a more coarse adjustment with the excenter here. Okay, let's do it. So the first step is to unsolder the light bulb. It's good to use a desolder gun. It's a little bit difficult because of the because of the angle. Now it's time to take out the mounting screws. Now we can take the light bulb out. In my case, the uh, light shield here was not glued to the light bulb body, so it came off separately. You see that here. 
So the light bulb is still in. In my case it was difficult to remove this light bulb because of the bent uh, leads that go to the bulb body and so uh, it was helpful to remove the screws of this circuit board so I was able to lift it up a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to take it out. So I'm pushing the board up a little bit and then it was possible to pull it out. Before I went on I put the screws back in. Here's a photo of the original light bulb after I took it out. So the difficulty here is that the light bulb is glued into this block and the block fits with a small slot this light shield and so it's difficult to replace this light bulb because of course they don't make these anymore. Here you see my replacement part. I designed this small printed circuit board that holds a high brightness white LED and its current limiting resistor and then we have here the two contacts that allow to connect this exactly like the light bulb was. I designed a 3D printed light shield that goes underneath here and so these two parts are glued together and that makes it very easy to replace the original light bulb assembly with this. Here you see the two parts assembled. Here you see the top side of the assembly. For the Biogram 4000 I added this uh, trimmer, so we have the same functionality like the original part. The ground contact is also made via the mounting screw with this contact, so we only need to solder one contact to the appropriate 6 volts pin on the circuit board. Before I put the part in, let me show you real quick how the aperture moves with the tone arm. The first step is to bolt the assembly in. Now it's time to solder that one lead to the 6 volts contact. That's it. Here's a demonstration. So it seems to work. Now with the trimmer clockwise we can increase the intensity and so you see it gets a little bit more vigorous. So with this we can adjust the gain of this uh, feedback loop. Now it is time to adjust the aperture position. Whenever the light source is changed in the tracking sensor then the position of the light source of course is a little bit different from before and that changes the entire setup because the light takes a different path through the aperture and hits the photoresistors in a different way. That means that the, the mechanism can either get too sensitive or it can react too slowly. Now here in the service manual they give a few steps how to do this properly. So what you do essentially is you put the platter back in but not the belt and you put a record on there and then you drive the carriage over the record and you lower the pickup. And then you turn the platter by hand counting the number of turns that it takes until the servo motor comes on and moves the carriage after the needle. The perfect number of turns that we want to achieve with this adjustment is 4 plus minus 1 turns. For doing the adjustment one uses this excenter screw B that allows to move the position of the photoresistors forth and back here relative to the aperture. Now this plate here is secured in place by screw C. So in order to do the adjustment we first loosen C and then we use B and we keep trying how many turns we get before the carriage starts moving. When we're done screw C needs to be tightened. It turned out in my case that it is best to only crack number C here because if you have to turn it many turns after adjusting everything with B then this here will shift quite a bit and the adjustment is altered. Okay let's do it. It's good to use a record that you don't really like. I use this here, it's uh, free jazz and also I use a cartridge that is damaged 
This is an MMC 20EN that uh, came with a 4002 biogram that I bought on eBay once and the seller failed to secure the aluminum panels and so during transport one of the aluminum panels uh, smashed into the cartridge. So it's dented and it doesn't emit any signal anymore. But it's perfect for this adjustment because the stylus is still on there. So the first step is to drive the carriage over the platter somewhere in the middle and now you lower the tone arm and then with your finger you turn the platter and so when you count now the rounds that I'm doing here you will see that at about 11 rounds the uh, servo will start spinning and the carriage will start moving. Here we go. And so this here needs to be adjusted now that this happens already after four turns. So we start out by loosening screw C a little bit. So I just crack it and that's it. And now you need to adjust Xcenter B and shift the photoresistors forth and back until you get your four turns here. So this may take a few tries so there is no way around just uh, trying it out and then adjusting things a little bit more. This here can be a little bit inconsistent because there's some play around this center. So in my case this took maybe 10 times or so. I'm not showing all of this. So this here looks pretty good. Maybe after five times now it came on maybe six. So it's a little bit too slow still. So I'm tightening now uh, screw C to fix everything in place. And now I'm doing another test. And you see it changed a little bit. So it took six or seven until it started moving. And you will see that happens every single time you tighten screw C. Now a great trick here is to use that potentiometer and change the gain a little bit. This gives you sort of a fine tuning. And so what I'm doing here now is I simply increase the intensity a little bit and then try again. And you will see that after increasing the intensity the servo comes on a little bit earlier because there is a little bit more light going through the aperture. So four and it started moving. So that's pretty good. And this means we are pretty much done. One more test. And here we go. So it's consistent. Okay, we're pretty much done. Oh wait, I wanted to show you what happens if the record plays in reverse because of this dual sensor setup. So here we go. So I'm turning it backwards and you see that the motor here really runs in the other direction. I was wondering why they implemented this feature in the circuit because usually the record runs forward. But of course with free jazz it doesn't really matter. Alright, that's it. Now you know how to replace the light bulb in a tracking sensor of a Biogram 4000 with an LED and how to do the adjustment after you do that. If you're interested in this replacement part, this is available, so just send me an email. Thanks for watching.